What is the first major news event you remember? Whether it was the day JFK was assassinated or when planes hit the World Trade Center, early news memories stick with you. Hi, this is Tracy Briggs, and welcome to this week's episode of Back Then with Tracy Briggs, brought to you this week by Discover Jamestown. To learn more, go to discoverjamestownnd.com. So, what is the first major news story you remember? How old were you? Did you happen to be seven years old? You'll see why I'm asking you that later on in this story. I was thinking about my early news memories last week on the 53rd anniversary of the moon landing. It appears from a page in my baby book that my parents had me write my name on that exact date, July 20th, 1969. Unfortunately, I have absolutely no memory of this most notable day in American history, either Neil Armstrong's giant leap for mankind or me conquering early penmanship with my ginormous John Hancock-sized T-R-A-C-Y. For me, the first real news event I remember in any detail was when members of a militant Palestinian group took 11 Israeli athletes hostage during the 1972 Olympic Games in Munich, West Germany. All of the hostages were killed. I'll never forget seeing the images of the hooded men on the balcony of the Olympic Village. It really stuck with me. Just a side note, this of course happened in the summer of 72. It's ironic that I would remember this, but I didn't actually remember the biggest news story that summer from Minnesota, much closer to home, and that is the kidnapping of Virginia Piper in July of 1972. It's ironic because I've been really immersed in that story for the past month and in fact have done a four-part podcast and series about the Virginia Piper kidnapping. So shameless self-promotion here. If you have not read that or seen that, or listen to the podcast, I would go to the vault and listen to the, to the four-part podcast. Again, it's fascinating. She survived, and there's a lot of mystery surrounding who actually kidnapped her. They suspect that one of them might have been a man who committed mass murder, including um, his own family members in Willow River, Minnesota, just a couple of months after the Virginia Piper kidnapping. So again, that was the biggest news event closer to home, in 1972, but I did not remember that. But I did remember the Olympic hostage situation in 1972. So as I said, all of this happened in 1972. And kind of interesting that I was seven years old that summer. And it really just shows that I am probably undeniably average. That is because studies show children as young as two or three years old can retain memories from things that happened to them but they aren't likely to pay attention to anything outside their bubble, including the news, until they are closer to seven years old. In fact, Common Sense Media, a resource for media usage, strongly recommends parents wait until their children are at least seven years old before exposing them to even a light level of news. Jill Murphy, who is the vice president and editor-in-chief at Common Sense Media, told the New York Times, it's developmental. It's never a good idea to share traumatic information with children under the age of seven. So maybe this is why so many of us report our first news memory around the time of those early elementary school years, around the time you're six, seven, eight years old. Of course, it follows that the bigger the news event and the closer it is to you or your child, the more likely it is that you, you or the child will remember it at an early age. For example, how many of you have memories of the flood of 97 or the flood of 09, even though you or your children were under the age of five? I know my nieces, my niece and my nephew were really immersed in that flood of 97 and they were pretty little kids. They still remember that pretty well. So I decided anyway to, to ask a few of my newsroom colleagues, people that work in the news every single day, what their first news memories were. Like me, a few of them said their first memories happened around the time they were seven years old. In fact, it's not surprising that my high school classmate, yes, we graduated high school together, we just had our 40th reunion together, sports reporter columnist Jeff Kolpak, has the exact same news memory of that hostage crisis at the 72 Olympics. This is what he said of it. For whatever reason, the voice of Jim McKay and the host of the 72 Olympics will never go away. Maybe it was the way in which he reported on the terrorists turning the Olympics into a news story of the worst proportion. Athletes were being held hostage and killed. It's a memory I wish never happened. Columnist Mike McFeely's first news memory is also from around the time he was seven in the summer of 74 when Richard Nixon resigned as president following the Watergate scandal. This is what he said. 
I don't know how or why, as a seven-year-old, I was watching a televised address of the POTUS announcing his resignation, but I was. We were at our family lake cabin near Alexandria, which at the time received only one TV channel, and I remember watching Nixon announce that he was going to step down. I knew from that moment I would be a journalist and a Democrat for the rest of my life. Just kidding. I probably went swimming or chased frogs. Again, that was Mike McFeely. Some of my colleagues remember stories from their pre-kindergarten days. Reporter and columnist Tammy Swift remembers the moon landing. This is what she said. Although this was probably more so because my parents bought a color TV to watch it. And to me, the most interesting thing was watching them try to wedge the TV through the back door. In fact, you guys remember that, how big TV sets were back then? Investigative reporter Patrick Springer's first news memory was one of the most tragic days in American history. This is his story. He says, this one was easy, but also tragic for me to recall the assassination of John F. Kennedy in 1963. I was a preschooler at the time, home for lunch with my parents, and our friendly milkman, yes, back in the days when milk was delivered, he poked his head in the door and asked if we had heard that the president had been shot. My dad jumped to turn on the television and Walter Cronkite of CBS was on the air with constant coverage. I was five years old, but it remains a vivid memory. Again, that was Patrick Springer. It was also fun to hear from some of the younger journalists in the room whose first memories of news events happened when some of us, shall we say, seasoned veterans uh, were already working in the news business. In fact, I might have been overheard calling them little whippersnappers while I was writing this story. For example, investigative reporter April Baumgarten remembers the impeachment of President Bill Clinton in 1998. That was her first memory. While editor Katie Young has a very notable first news memory. She says, As I imagine is the case for a majority of people my age, my first news memory is 9-11. I remember the world stopping and the TVs being turned on at my elementary school, something we almost never did. At school and at home, we watched the footage over and over again. And I think this was also the first time I held real conversations about a major news event. Again, that was editor Katie Young. I'd like to hear what your first news memory was. Was it at the age of seven, like so many of us? What do you remember? You can certainly shoot me an email at tracy.briggs at formcom.com with your stories for use in a possible follow-up column. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Back Then with Tracy Briggs. And again, thanks to our sponsor, Discover Jamestown. To learn more, go to discoverjamestownnd.com. Forum Communications is proud to be part of The Trust Project. Learn more at thetrustproject.org.